Welcome back to another episode of Pushing Back Chaos with me, Paul Mellon McFadden. Back in sunny Saudi after uh, a bit of an Easter vacation down under, or caught up with family and friends and all points of the compass. We just had a, we had a great time. Stayed with family, and every day was just seeing more people, more special people for us. And you know, the kids loved it. Time with cousins and grandparents and all the rest of it. In any case, we've got to apologise that we are late on this episode. Partly it's because of me travelling and we got COVID again during this trip. So we sort of got smashed a bit. Tia Raff is off uh, taking care of doing some building maintenance. You can just imagine how busy that guy is when he when he is back home from his uh, travels. Anyway, so he's he's been flat out there. And Mike has been just in the middle of a huge training program and... Uh, no excuses, but apologies for this episode coming out late. But Mike, how are you, mate? How have you been? I know you've been flat out, busting it. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, to say the least, dude. Uh, yeah, I've been on the road and just this past week. I I, I would like to say I, I somehow just think all this is Raf's fault. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> but but uh, but no. Uh, back to. The week, man, it's it's been a kick in the nuts. It's been one of the harder, honestly, probably one of the harder weeks that I've had in the last few years, which sucks, but it's also a good thing because we always talk about gut checks and, you know, just testing yourself over and over. It's not like you can take one test in your life and you're like, ah, oh, I've made it, I'm good. And then you just sit on the couch. So it's definitely been one of those weeks. I think it's been um, right around 20 hour work days like legit work and averaging about four hours of sleep a night or, you know, but <laughs> throughout the work week. So not much sleep, lots of stress. Um, I won't get into a lot of the specifics. I don't really talk about a lot of specific stuff that I do. Uh, you, most of you don't need to know that <laughs> anyways, but it's, it's been, uh, it's been pretty challenging. And this weekend has, actually been the first couple of days off that I've had off in about a month and a half. It's the first time I've gotten, uh, honestly, Friday, I probably slept 12 hours and Saturday I probably slept around 10 and just, it felt amazing just to, just to sleep and sleep in a bed. And, you know, I've, I have everything to be grateful for. So just, it just bears just a, a quick highlight. So 20 hour work days, four hours of sleep and first weekend off for six weeks. It is, it is crazy what you do, mate. And I, I think I speak for all of our listeners in thanking you for undertaking that task. Challenges, you know, probably too small a word to do what you do. We talk offline, obviously quite a lot. And just, I'm sure everyone out there can imagine what a person like Mike does in the middle of a training program. And it is super difficult, very physically challenging and extremely dangerous. The stuff that he's doing both by daylight and then in the hours of darkness to re repeat that stuff, make sure that the skills are high. Just a, just a huge amount of work, mate. I just take my hat off to you and thank you again. For what it is that you, you're doing in life massive challenges well, i appreciate it melon but you know you and you and raf <laughs> damn well know that you both have done the same uh many times over and uh you know it's kind of awkward to hear that from like other guys who have gone and done it <laughs> and raf has done it way longer than me and i think you and i are probably about the same time of service in anyways so it's like from my peers i appreciate it but you you guys know what it is but I also don't want to, uh, I, I never want to come off cocky. I never want to, I'm not, I don't like to, I don't like to brag like that, like I'm something better or uh, whatever, because I know there's a lot of people out there who do way more than I do. And there's people who have jobs or responsibilities that are 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And uh, I don't want to take away from their hard work either, you know, like being a mom or a dad or a single parent for that matter. They, they don't get, they don't get time off and that's harder than a lot of stuff that I do of longevity and everything else. So, um, 
you know, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's not better. It's not worse. It's just different. And this is uh, just the path that I'm currently on and I'm grateful for it. And I love it and appreciate it. I love the, love the guys that I'm with and I'm just really super grateful for those guys. But uh, yeah, we're, we're all, we're all working. We're all trying to be better and take care of the things that we love. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're all in it, man, but I, I appreciate it. I don't think anyone would ever accuse you of, um, you know, big upping yourself or uh, overstating what it is you do, mate. You're a very humble man. One of the things that we all uh, love about Mike. But this week we we're, we're responding to some fantastic feedback we've received. We've got some great messages in and questions and suggestions and topic ideas after last week's episode 44, which was a pursuit of happiness. We got some some just great questions around if we were emphasizing not really the pursuit of happiness, we were more, more emphasizing a pursuit of uh, meaning and fulfillment. There was questions about like, so how do we achieve those things? What What is it that is going to lead to that meaningful or fulfillment or peace as opposed to the, the happiness stuff, which is the, the first great question. The second one we had was a really good question around what we do for hobbies you know, downtime away from work, away from family. What is it that we spend our time doing? That was the second question. The third one was like a challenge or a question around, is, is it ever too late in life? So those three questions are sort of what we thought we would kick off on this week. And, you know, I think, Mike, you've, you've really sort of alluded to the first one around that pursuit of meaning and fulfillment, exactly what you're doing in your career, what you're doing professionally. You've got personal goals and, and tasks that you're striving for that are going to be bringing meaning and fulfillment into your life. But then there's also the stuff you're doing now as a leader, leading a team to achieve stuff that's important. So, you know, maybe you can share with us some of your thoughts around that pursuit of meaning or fulfillment and how that plays out in your life. Yeah. Thanks, Melon. Um, you know, I'm very fortunate in a lot of ways because in conversations I've had over my, my life since, uh, I'd say high, high school, I'm very lucky to say that I'll probably never have, no, I definitely won't have the issue of saying I never got to live my dream. And that's the job that I'm in now. And that's very special to me. I realize uh, how rare that is. And I, I, I do think about it often. Um, but, you know, we're talking about the pursuit of happiness and trying to be happy. Um, and we, we listed a lot of good, meaningful roads to that. But, you know, to the response was, hey, maybe touch on the pursuit of meaningfulness. Mm. Oh, OK. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a that's a good point. Good topic. So uh, a couple of things I wrote down was doing things that have purpose, uh, not just doing things to do things, you know, not just to stay busy, but being intentional with your time and with your goals and uh, service to others than yourself. And don't get me wrong. It's very important to take care of yourself, right? I'm not sitting there saying, well, just sacrifice yourself for everybody else's problems or everybody else's health and happiness. Like you deserve it too. But when you consistently involve other people and, and try to serve other people, uh, you're going to find meaning in it. And then ultimately just remember that positive actions bring positive results most of the time. <laughs> Uh, when you're doing good things intentionally with a good heart and a good mind and your words and your actions back it up, uh, there typically is positive results that you get back. And I don't know too many people that when they don't have a compliment, they don't see somebody happy or celebrate because of something you did for them, that it doesn't make you happy. It's uh, soul food, if you will. And uh, usually that person wants to be around you and then you appreciate them and vice versa. And it kind of goes into you know, building meaningful relationships. Uh, we've, we've talked about before in this, on this podcast about the importance of relationships. 
and healthy relationships. And what, what is a healthy relationship? Uh, this is the beginning stage of one of them is, Hey, what kind of, what can you do for me type thing? And then when you really see the character and the values of another person, you, you start to admire them and like, wow, you know what? They're a good person. And I like having them around. That's, that's a great compliment. And that usually puts you in a good, a good state of happiness and, and uh, discovering your meaningfulness to them or your part in that community. So I, I think that's a good start point just to, just to go uh, into the response to that question, Melon. Yeah. I think that there's, for me, there's really two key parts. And one of it is, like you've you touched on both of them already, but pursuing meaningful goals. So having that time, I think all of us need that time to reflect and really think about what is it that that we're really after in our life. And it could be family, career, family, finances, fitness, education, a whole lot of stuff. And it's going to be different for each of us. But really getting clear on what that meaningful goal is for um, you and then taking action to be moving yourself towards it. I think that is what really brings a lot of meaning and motivation and um, fulfillment into your life. The feeling that you are moving towards a goal that you value, you, not not from other people around you. So that's where you're going to have to have that reflection time. So that's, that's one part, pursuit of meaningful goals. And the second one is relationships. You know, having relationships with people you you just mentioned that there that count to you the circle of people that you're spending time with it could be again work could be personal could be family during this time in australia i, I spent a lot of time with old friends you know family members and people i've known for more than 20 years i mean one key relationship that I talk about quite a lot on here is my relationship with my wife, Cherry. And last month we just went through 22 years since we met, you know, and I mean, it put, it puts a smile on my face to think about it. And I've got just layers of memory of experiences I've had uh, with her. And one of the key things for these old relationships is how do you keep them fresh? How do you, have them occur as something other than stale and just something you take for granted. And for her and I, it's really, it's one of the things is we, we plan, we plan and, and undertake a lot of fun together because we've got those basic human needs for novelty, like new experiences. And then you've got the human need for routine and stability. And it's difficult to have them both get met by the same person and over a long period of time. So we have like our normal routine, our day-to-day -day family stuff, which involves a lot of repetition, you know, getting up in the morning and getting yourself out the door and off to work and her taking care of homeschooling Annie and, you know, running the household and stuff. There's a lot of stuff that's going to be the same. And then, but having that really set up with intention and having thought about how to optimize or have those parts of your life go as well as possible. And then having fun together like we would we le legit plan our our uh, recreation time and really think about what we're going to do when we're on our vacation time or when we get time just at home to have fun together and i think that that intentionality can really keep it fresh it certainly has for us you know like we're really still best best friends so for me there, those two things are pursuing a meaningful goal and having meaningful relationships. And I think that the definition of a meaningful relationship is people that you know you're a better version of yourself from having time with them. You know, we've all probably got a lot of people in our lives. There's going to be new people and old people. And it, it could be that some of them, you know, we're not, It's they're not bringing out our best. It could be, they could be old friends or old acquaintances we have that you know encourage whinging or complaining or you know negative sorts of behavior and there can be new people that you might 
you know, really feel like when I'm around these people, the conversations are just great and I'm thinking different thoughts and they see me in a different way. And so it could be that you need to reflect on who you spend your time with and thinking that we're like the average of the five people we spend the most time with. It could be that there are relationships that it could be time to let go and there could be new people you want to invest time in. Like the three of us on this podcast, you know, Mike, you, me, and, and Raf, this is a new friendship that we've decided to invest in as adults, not because we went to school together or we worked together or any of that sort of stuff. We just decided, we've met these people that for some reason, we just, we have great conversations. We encourage each other to be better. We hold each other for, to account when we're, when we miss out on our being our best. And, you know, you can be intentional and think about new, new relationships. Anyway, so my two points there are pursuing meaningful goals and uh, meaningful relationships, both old and new. Oh, it's um, <clears throat> if you would have told me a couple of years ago that you know I'd be I'd be best friends with a Mexican in Spokane, Washington, and a and a Australian in Saudi Arabia, <laughs> I, I would have laughed. I'm still laughing, actually. If I'm being honest, I'm still laughing, but. <laughs> No, I, I I can I can really attest to you and Chez's relationship, uh, your family in in general, and and Raf too. Uh, the intention is always there, and you guys speak about it often. And that's one big thing I take away from your guys' relationship and the relationship you both have with your children, Michael and Annie, is you're very intentional with your time what you guys want to accomplish, whether it be a goal, whether it be a vacation or family time, or even just sitting around the dinner table talking about how was your day, like very intentional. And it shows, like you said, man, it shows in spades, like how, how it multiplies the, the joy and the build and the building of the pillars in the relationship. Um, you're probably one of the most open families uh, I've ever met. So one, I admire you guys and I look up to you guys for that reason. I try to learn how to be like you guys and share it. Uh, but I just, you know, I want to give you a, a compliment there, man, because I see it in, in you and your family all the time. And I think that's such a key to what we're talking about is doing something meaningful. Well, anytime we all say that, hey, I want to do this, I want to have this job, I want this responsibility, this position, um, whatever, it's great at the beginning, mm. but as time goes on, life occurs and things change, feelings change, mindset changes, phys your physical condition changes, um, everything changes. And maybe that meaningful thing starts losing its, its spark. Maybe, maybe it starts, uh, dwindling a little bit, which, you know, I think really happens with anything, whether it be a, a relationship, a, a marriage, um, a job. And, you know, I think you asked me, Melon, you know, how does this work for me within what I do? And well, how do you keep it meaningful, Mike? <laughs> well, I think to the outside, you know, people could look at it kind of like, you know, something done in a movie, it's like, oh, you're going to do this cool stuff and you're, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, 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 that's what I do. And don't get me wrong. Like, I'm grateful to do it. And some days I I'm, I sit back, I still look at my guys. And I'm like, we're getting freaking paid for this. Like, how <laughs> how crazy is that? I mean, it's like you and Raph with flying. Like, you guys love flying. And it's just like, yeah, hey, on top of it, we're going to pay you. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. And you get a cool uniform, right? <laughs> but, uh you know, the, the hard part, though, is on, the you know, digging into those problems that ultimately seep in. It's it's not always the cool stuff that keeps you around or that keeps things exciting. It's finding the your true meaning and purpose in what you're doing. Um, if I'm being completely honest, you know, I find myself struggling as I get older within this job, with, within this lifestyle. Um, it's great for what I do and I love doing it, but what I always go back to, well, what the hell am I giving up by being here so long? And 
being away and sacrificing so much. And I know a lot of people out there listening, especially military, uh, active duty or veterans, uh, or, you know, truck drivers and everybody else, they're always committing and they're always gone or on the road and, and providing for their family. Um, you start questioning like, what the hell do I keep doing this for? Mm. And I'll tell you, man, being, being 35 and being gone as long as I am and training as hard as I do and then deploying and doing what we have to do. Um, it's great, but in the back of my head, I'm, I'm constantly thinking about a family and, and, you know, I won't speak on it too much, but you know, I'm, I'm back to being single again for a little while now. And it feels like I'm back at square one. And it sucks, but at the same time, it's just not square one because of who I am and the work I've put in. I feel more developed and I still feel great about myself. Like I still love myself, <laughs> you know, and I just feel good uh, on that front. But it's just like, am I giving up something that I used to love, meaning my job, for something that I want more, you know, which is a, a, a wife and children? And like I said, some days I wake up and I'm like, what the hell am I still doing this for? And, uh, but then getting to figure out that purpose usually comes from people like we're talking about that we have meaningful relationships with and that intimately know us and who we are and our character and our values, what we believe in, how we treat other people, what we stand for. Uh, the other day, my really good buddy, Brady, brought his new daughter over and she's seven months and she's just a freaking cutie pie peanut. Let me tell you. And, uh, he took some pictures of, of me with her and I was tickling her feet with a feather and she was just like <laughs> belly laughing uncontrollably. And she was just the cutest little, you know, chubby monkey. And, uh, I found myself just in a completely different place. I didn't think about work. I didn't think about moving. I didn't think about anything negative, dude. I was just so happy to like, just sit there with her and, and watch her laugh and just be a baby. And I looked at Brady and I was like, dude, I want you to know how freaking proud of you. I am the man you're becoming the father you are to her. And th this is amazing. And I was like, I'm so happy for you. And as much as I am, like I am non jealous by any means, but you know, it kind of hit me and I, I opened up to him and I said, dude, you know, this, this bothers me for me, you know, like this is what I want in the worst way. And he goes, I know it's hard for you, man. And, you know, he's like, but I need to share something with you. And these are his words, not mine, but he's like, for what you do for me and my daughter and my wife and all the people out there, you provide us with this opportunity to be happy and have a family and have security and allow my, my daughter to grow up the way she's going to grow up. And he got kind of teared up and gave me a, a huge hug and told him I loved him. And honestly, that, that meant so much to me to like, you know, it was like he was pouring, pouring fuel back on the fire. And I was like, yeah, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And it's clear again, you know, he just kind of wiped away the doubt and some of that. And that's, that's, that's what you need. That's what you want in a really good friend and a good relationship is somebody that can uh, really see you for you instead of grinding along, you know, <laughs> I mean, life is not supposed to be work every day. Life's not supposed to be margaritas on a beach either. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, it's an ebb and flow and kind of up and down and what you do in between and how you are with people that really matters. So. I think that that is a perfect example of those two elements of the pursuit of meaning where you've got a meaningful relationship with someone and shout out to Brady <laughs> and his wife, such beautiful uh, young family. Yeah. So ha having that meaningful relationship with someone who, who draws out the best in you and you're a better person around them. And then the pursuit of a meaningful goal and a true friend is someone who can give you that clarity when you have, we all have those moments. We all have those moments where there's competing priorities in life and what am I really going after? And, you know, we all should go through those reflection periods 
not just a mindless chasing after yesterday's goal. We do need to keep thinking about these things. But what he's gifted you there is him giving you that fresh appreciation again of what it is that you're doing in the highest sense, not just the personal satisfaction you can have of doing a difficult task and achieving something difficult, but really what it is that, that, drew, that drew you back in the day to the career that you're pursuing. And a, a great friend is someone who can get you back in touch with that meaningful goal and can, as you've said, like, you know, sort of cleared away that uncertainty and you can then get back after uh, your day-to-day. -day. I mean, what a what a great example of what a true relationship with someone that's meaningful and the clarity around the goal that you're pursuing. I mean, what a great friend. Yeah, he is he's an amazing friend. Because this is one of the big challenges, right? Like these meaningful goals that we're pursuing and meaningful relationships, how do we keep them fresh over time? And I sort of I touched on it a little bit with, uh, you know, inside my marriage, but it's the same with your career. You know, like how do we keep going and, you know, getting out the door, that same routine that we all have a, a need for and that is that allows us structure in our lives from which we can achieve greatness. But every job, you know, like <laughs> if you and I and Raf and everyone else I know who has amazing careers can have those days when it's a grind where it really is just occurring as stress and pressure and work, you know, and you want that novelty and, you know, like there, don't get me wrong, there are, there are days I absolutely love what I do. You know, I'll look out the canopy of the aircraft and just be like, man, I cannot believe that I get to do this. But it takes intention to have those moments occur more often because, you know, freshness comes out of anything. And it takes, it takes, you've used the word intentionality. And I think that that's true for, certainly been true in my marriage. It's true in any of my relationships that have lasted for a long time. My relationship with my brothers, my sister, my mum, old friends, that you've got to keep creating it again. It's not just going to, sure. it's not just going to, it's not one time click and it runs forever. You know, you've got to keep putting that energy in, planning activities together and having key conversations. But it's the same thing with your career. Like how do you have that occur to you fresh when it's not going to be every day, but you do need to have that periodic reset. And I think that, that is, you, you've, you've probably given everyone like a key insight into how you do that. And it's key conversations with people who know you deeply that can get you back in touch with the goal that you're initially pursuing and can just make it fresh again. Would you agree that that is something that has occurred there? It, it, it's, it's not, uh, it's not just a good idea. I believe it's essential, mm. you know, it, it's essential to have those conversations and be able to have those people in your life where you can have those conversations with them. Um, otherwise you're just, you know, you're talking to the mirror or, <laughs> you know, believing something that you just saw five seconds ago on an Instagram post, like, no, 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 that's not real life. Real life is the impact and the relationships that you truly have with people. Like that's, that's what's real. Uh, you know, that's, uh, that leads kind of into uh, the second part that, you know, we threw out the thing of, Hey, what topics would you guys like to hear? And one of them was, you know, how about some hobbies? You know, what about hobbies? Like nobody wants to just go to work every day and grind uh, there's life outside of it, you know, and some people get lost in their work when they're like, this is all I have. And this is who I am. And then it's like, Hey, do you want to do this? No. Do you want to do this? No. Why? I don't have the time. I don't care about that. That's not important. It's just like, dude, you're, you're drowning yourself. Um, you know, and, and hobbies are another part that can, you know, add multiple little sparks to your fire and, and keep things going. It keeps things interesting and new. Um, you know, I'll be, I'll be the first to attest to Mellon and Chezza, you know, and they're in their mid to late forties. And if you tell me that they're going to a, uh, 
what is it melon it's it's not a rave but it's just like this huge dj techno concert with a hundred thousand people with lasers and fire and they're out there just rocking it like they're both 22 again just smiling and taking pictures like you know a bunch of kids i mean i love seeing that they're still doing that you know it's like anybody else is like why are you guys still doing that at your age it's like why are you not you know, like you, you guys truly are best friends and you, you travel and you try stuff, uh, together. And it just really shows that it, it really makes your relationship stronger and blossom. And there's always something new to talk about, something to share, a new lesson that was learned, uh, new pictures that you guys can hang up from all over the world and, you know, whatever. And, and especially great memories with Michael and Annie, you know, your children, you know, um, it's, it absolutely is a, a huge part of life, work, and your personal time, your hobbies. So uh, I've made a list, you know, just going down real quick of some hobbies of mine. Probably a little bit different than the standard, what people hear. Uh, but the first one is definitely this uh, this podcast. I, I, you know, we're at two and a half, uh, closing in on three years almost. And yeah. uh, what? july i think um this has been a huge impact in my life and for the longest time i was wondering what my purpose was and finding meaning in things again and i found it by helping other people um i'm not saying you know like oh man we're changing the world but i know for a fact a few people that have come into my life or reached out to me and i was able to impact them in i believe a positive way along with Mel and Raph, they were all for every single one of them. And, uh, you know, this is a way to influence, you know, I don't like the word influence because I think it's, it's misused, but mentor. Um, I really think all the good things I've been through and some of the really terrible things I've been through has given me a lot of life lessons that I can speak to because I'm comfortable speaking about it. And, uh, you know, I love doing this podcast for that reason. I love helping people. Uh, second one is I love charity work. I've been very blessed uh, at moments in my life. I have secure job, finances, you know, like place to live, like everything, my health. And uh, I know that's not the case for a lot of people. Uh, I've been all around the world and see, seen how third world countries live and what they have to deal with. Um, I've seen people here in, in the U.S. Uh, that are struggling, single mothers that are paycheck to paycheck trying to take care of their children or maybe even uh, Christmas, you know, when um, – a parent has to explain to their children that Santa is not coming this year and to see the disappointment. Well, maybe, uh, maybe a special helper can bring in 10 extra gifts and show up under the tree and watch this kid light up and, uh, you know, believe in the magic and just, there, there's nothing that can replace that. I don't care who you are, or what you're doing. Like you can affect a child or a family that way and help them out. And when they're down, um, you know, we should, um, another one that I like doing is, uh, special Olympics. So people with uh, disabilities and, um, yeah, man, that's a whole nother league of its own. Being around them has taught me so much about humanity, humility, and gaining perspective on my life and what I have the ability to do. Um, and honestly, they're some of the most cheerful, happy people <laughs> that I've ever been around. And it's just inspiring to see that, they don't make excuses. They don't understand excuses of like, Oh, I'm special needs. They're like, no, I'm going to go do this. And to watch these, uh, these special athletes out there running marathons or doing track and field like the rest of us. And they're excelling and probably better than half the people that are perfectly healthy. And, you know, it's like, wow, man, like they just teach you so much. And, uh, I just want to throw it out there too. It's something I'm actively looking for. I'd love to find a special needs child uh, that could reach out that would maybe like to do something in the realm of what I do for my career. And my goal before I retire is to bring this 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 child in uh, with their family and uh, let them do what I do for a day and uh, give them the best day of their life that they, you know, that they could do. So that's a goal of mine. So if anybody out there knows anybody, um, please reach out to us and let me know um, that that is a huge goal and passion of mine. I would love to make that happen. Um, and then the last part is youth interaction. And uh, I've been very active with some JROTC 
the U.S. Navy Sea Cadets, uh, some sports teams. And then also um, I went back to my old high school where they had like an alumni thing where I went in and, and was able to speak to the whole school and share some life lessons and things about goal setting and, you know, just different things. But I think it's absolutely our job as we get older and gain experience, both negative and positive, to share our story to make the next generation better. Uh, I think there's too much focus on self and look at me, look at me, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, it's not all about you. It's about building your community, building your friendships, your circles, your relationships. Um, I love doing that. I, I, I believe I've been blessed with really great times and very, very terrible times. Both are blessings. Don't get me wrong because they've made me exactly who I am and I'm grateful for it. Uh, and I just want to share it. So every opportunity that I have in my free time when I'm not working 20 hour days and getting my ass kicked and, you know, whatever, <laughs> being super uncomfortable, uh, I like to give to others. I like to help others. I like to, you know, and as much as I give them, they give me uh, probably 10 times more back. And, you know, how special. Interesting in that, um, that second listener question about hobbies you can hear mike talking there there's still there's a lot of meaning in in what he's doing there i mean one of those clear drivers of uh in the pursuit of meaning or fulfillment is positive contribution to, to others and and it's clear when you listen to mike with his list of stuff that he's doing with his his downtime that there's really a lot of focus out and it's not a mystery that you know mike is living a life where there's a lot of satisfaction you know you can't can't be making a contribution across that broader spectrum from the special needs to sea cadets to speaking at his old school and impacting young people it's a great it's a great list of uh it's a great example of how you can spend your time when I was looking at the hobbies there, it was sort of, I had the thought of, you know, if I was given a, a couple of hours that there was no task attached to, how would I spend that time? And, you know, that that thought, the old military leave being R&R, &R, rest and recreation. Recreation, not just being fun. You know, the actual word is recreate, recreation. A word that's obviously been selected carefully there. There's... I broke it out into two areas being that we've all got needs, introverted aspects of our personality and then extroverted aspects. And I've, I've heard them described as, you know, we're all on a spectrum and be different from time to time and introverts get their energy back from time on their own. Whereas extroverts get their time, their energy back from time with other people. And we'll all shift and slide there. And probably I identify a bit more as most of the time I'm extroverted, but Still, my introverted time for recreation will be like for myself to get my energy back. I read every night. I listen to podcasts most days and exercise. And during those times, I'm that's where I'm having those reflection periods, trying to think about meaningful goals or areas of my life where I've, I've let myself down and I can perhaps revisit and try and uh, make amends or atone. So that's the introverted side. The extroverted side is like, tends to be time with other people. So I'm also volunteering to youth programs over here with uh, specifically the rugby. I've been coaching there for a long time and I get a lot, it's just so satisfying to have time with with children on the pitch and seeing them grow and develop and deal with themselves. But then there's also maybe a less fun part, which is the administration. So I've been uh, involved in the committees out here for a number of years, chairing the stuff there. So engage in the community. Other stuff in extroverted time, if I had a couple of hours, I'd probably want to have time like this with you, Mike, you know, having conversations with people that mean something to me, you know, and that was really our vacation time in Australia was pretty much just rammed full every day of time with people that are meaningful and great conversations and, you know, fun together, listening to music and, doing some of that stuff that you're talking about, they're going to the music festivals. I did go to a music festival in Australia with my wife and some friends. So I think it's worth looking at and being intentional around 
your hobby time, your recreation time? Like, what is it that you're doing there? Because, you know, all work and no play makes Johnny a dull boy. The old saying. <laughs> and, and life should be enjoyed, you know. We've only got this short period of time and it can't just be rammed only with, like, career or with one aspect of life. We do need to look at what are we doing across the spectrum. And you should be doing things that are giving your life back and recharging your batteries and giving you that energy to then go and get after some of those other challenging goals in other areas of your life. But yeah, so I sort of broke it out like that. I really like your list though. I thought there was a whole a whole raft of really great focus on con- contribution to other people in your list there, Mike. Yeah, man. And, and uh, you know, listening to your list, I mean, I've watched you do it over the years is invest your time in the rugby team and family and your community and, and your job and doing everything, man. And, you know, if you, if you're listening to, to our list, they are different, but that's, that's the beauty of it is because mm-hmm. I think listening to your list and reviewing mine, they, there really is a lot of purpose and positive that is put into it and received from it. It's not like, Oh yeah. I like to go sit at the bar all night or I like you're to go like do Raph. something. I'll yeah. Like Raph, Raph, you know, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's tanked in Spokane. Yeah, but uh, staring into the empty yeah. bottles of tequila. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can you can see the difference there, and it's not like my, my list is better than Melons or this, that, whatever hobbies. It's like those those are his passions, and mine are mine, and they both, like I said, are positive. And when we can share them with each other, like Raph and Melon are on my team. Uh, they're all you know, and they're my best friends. So maybe something that you know, I'm really passionate about or good at, like I can share with them and they can do the same with me. And that's what makes us a great team and great friends. You know, we're just always offering something there and always learning something there. And uh, that, that's what makes it great, man, is because of hobbies and stuff, not because they're pilots and I do what I do. Like who gives a shit? You know, it's, it's the stuff on the outside that the intentional time, that uh that we make that's that's what makes great friends and, and uh meaningfulness yeah good time with good people right like during this vacation we just had some fantastic time meals and you know sitting around a fireplace or cooking over coals just and and mo- most of those amazing times were, were shared with uh, with other people that, that mean something to us all right mm-hmm. So we've hit there the pursuit of meaning or fulfillment. The second one was hobbies and recreation time. So the third point or topic or challenge from people was around that sense of is it is it ever too late? Are there sometimes in life where you've just got to say, no, that's that door's closed, I'm going to move on? Or, you know, are you on the other side of the coin where you think, where you feel like, hey, no, 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 there's, it's never too late? What are your thoughts and uh, how have you approached this one, Mike? Mm, that's a big one. That's a really big one. Uh, I believe it was the Dalai Lama that said the biggest mistake that we have as humans is we think we have time. Mm-hmm. And uh, listening to you explain your, uh, your hobbies and realizing mine is you said the word time quite a bit. Well, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been involved with this community for a long time i interact with my kids for a long time and that time word is very key um you ask yourself questions you know and i hear people say it is is it ever too late to uh start something to end something to evolve into something to earn something uh or whatever i don't i don't know like why are you asking somebody else is my first question. Like if there's something that you truly want, Mm -hmm. go get it. And that's easier said than done. I'm not going to act like it not because there's many things that I've wanted before that I didn't seize the day and go and achieve or earn. (laughs) I think we all have, but, um, you know, one of the, one of the listeners that listened to the pursuit of happiness, uh, sent, a meaningful uh it's a picture it's it's a quote in a picture frame Mm -hmm. and i posted it on our social media and stuff but i just i i I don't know how many times i read it 
but it truly impacted me in thinking about what I was doing during my day, especially this past week. Don't get me wrong. Uh, waking up <laughs> before I was asleep, my my face is swollen and my eyes don't want to open. And I'm just going, what the hell am I doing in my life? You know, rolling out of bed like Melon. And um, I, I'll read it, but, it, you know, it, it goes straight into this, what we're talking about. It goes, this is the beginning of a new day. You have been given this day to use as you will. You can waste it or, or use it for good. What you do today is important because you are exchanging a day of your life for it. When tomorrow comes, this day will be gone forever. And in its place is something that you have left behind. Let it be something good. I mean, that's powerful, man. Like just to, we're always worried about the future and well, when's this going to happen? And is it too late? It's just like, what about today? What about right now? What's what's stopping you? Really think about that because it sure as hell made me think. Um, what what are your thoughts on that? Look, I I got to say that I I come down one hundred percent on the same side as you there, Mike. I don't know whether it's maybe because both of us lost our fathers when we were pretty young, but um at the age of eleven I saw my dad pass. And I just think that there's a really healthy side to having an awareness of our own mortality and to, to knowing that the number of days in front of us is one less than it was yesterday. You know, we don't know the day and we don't know the hour, but there's an end. And that can be something that can be motivating and uplifting that we don't have all the time in the world. And, you know, all of us have got instances where we either had a, a goal that we thought of and put aside or a, a relationship that broke down and we sort of left it. But I feel like we can revisit all of those things. Like you were just saying, you know, we've got today and when tomorrow comes, today is going to be gone. And, and what, have we, what have we got let in exchange for it? You know, I've had relationships that were totally dead and gone inside my family and with with people who were really close personal friends and major parts of my life before. And it's not easy to go back and to think about how you've caused that situation or what you've done to to not follow that dream that you once had. And it can be like that, there's that bit of pill of taking responsibility for everything that you have in your life and everything you don't have in your life. And on the other side of that though, you have the power to take action and you know, the cornerstone of all Western liberal democracies, Australia, UK, US, Canada, et cetera, comes from the Greek and the Greek philosophy and, and everything is embedded in that knowledge that the, the humans are mortals. And the gods had, the gods were immortal. They had forever. And they were capricious and cruel. And all their stories, they're just doing horrible things to each other and horrible things to the humans. And it's the mortals who are achieving these amazing things, you know, these stories about Hercules and Achilles and so on, despite the fact that they've got no time. And probably because they know they've got a limited amount of time. And there's, yeah. there's something that's worth reflecting on for all of us, you know, that the, the days are numbered ahead of us and I, I feel like if you can give up that resignation that those previous goals you didn't go after or those relationships you've left drift if you can give up the resignation that those things are done I think you can revisit them and you can attack them and you can work to put trauma in the past and clear the pathway forward and there's a lot of joy that can come back into your life when you've addressed that stuff you know, you can, you know, it's never too late to start exercising or eating well. You know what I mean? Like, you can do that at any day. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, man. I don't mean to jump in. You were talking about like the, the old Greek mythology and how they, the gods were because they were immortal uh, and how they were cruel and just did what they wanted and didn't really consider anybody else. But it was the humans that uh, displayed beautiful things like love and, 
caring for one another and doing extravagant acts uh, to show it. And it, it just popped in my head, but the movie 300 (laughs) and uh, when uh, the 300 Spartans were fighting to defend their, you know, Sparta and and Greece against uh, the invading um, Persian army, they were, I mean, they, they believed with such passion and purpose and their meaning in their, in their very bones was to be warriors and defend Sparta. And they were well outnumbered and still figured out a way to win. And when, uh, Ethialtes, the hunchback who de- defected to the Persian army because he was promised something better, you know, it was literally like the grass is green on the other side and he believed it. Uh, and he turned on, on the Spartans. And, uh, once he basically doomed the 300 Spartans, he crushed their he crushed their meaning and their purpose and they knew it that they they were going to fight to the death right there and he points his spear at Ethialtes and he says you there may you live forever because he knows that the pain and the deception that he did is a pain that nobody ever wants to live with and the worst punishment would be to live forever and remember what you did and never be able to fix it. And I just thought, I don't know why that popped in my head, but you were talking about the Greeks and, and kind of, you know, <laughs> is it too late <laughs> kind of thing? It's like, yeah, for the Altes, it was too late. He made his decision and, and uh, you know, the result was the result. But, um, you know, a lot of the times the people that, you know, we, we, we speak to or message and stuff, they're talking about, is it ever too late to start a new career or, um, to become a new person, you know, I, I've been this terrible person and I want to change. Is it too late for me? Um, is it too late to start a new relationship, to go rekindle a relationship, to fix a relationship? You know, we've all done wrong in our past with whatever it might be, but um, I think there's always something you want to address, but it's like, uh, I don't know if I want to go back there or whatever. But then we go through our life like dragging this anchor be- behind us. And we're living in fear that it's just going to pop up whenever it wants to. And, I, and it's going to just bring down my entire sense of happiness or self or whatever. It's like waiting in the dark corner to lash out at you. And man, it's just, what do you, when are you planning on doing this? When is the time right? Is there going to be a time where you just wake up one day and you go, Oh yeah, you know what? Today I'm just going to start a new career or, yeah, I'll just fix this. It's like, no, you can do that right now. Mm. Uh, the only thing that's really keeping you from doing it is you. Yeah, you're going to get pushed back from friends and or who you think are friends or society or social media or, you know, some made up standard that you've established. You know, it's just like, well, if I don't have children by the time I'm 30, then I'm a complete failure and I don't mean anything. It's just like, who gave you that timeline? Who put that standard on, on that? Oh, you did, or someone told you and you bought into it. So who can change that? You, you can change that. Um, I, yeah, I believe it's never too late. There's, there's people that have become pilots at 60 years old after doing an entire other career. And they're like, you know what? I want to go back to my childhood dream and I just want to fly. And they become pilots at 60. There's people that get married at 90 years old um, that are good. There's people who become parents at the much later date than what doctors say is impossible. You know, I mean, th- there's there's always some kind of thing out there uh, as long as you want it to happen and you're intentional with your actions and your time, you can do it. Like, they're, it's never too late. It's just uh, finding the, re- like I said, finding the reason to do it versus finding a reason not to. And the, the thought there, when you've got that awareness of immortality, it can help you address that in a lot of cases, it's a fear that's holding us back from pursuing a goal that we value, some sort of dream we've, we've thought, or maybe a relationship. You know, you, you're like, oh, what if I fail? It's like, well, you're going to die. You know, you are, your life is going to end at some stage. And so, you know, don't let this fear stop you. 
that fear of something that's going to pass, you know, a, a fleeting, you know, you're going to get up in front of people and talk like public speaking. We all have, it's a very common fear, you know, you're going to stand up and you're going to look like an idiot. Well, you, you A, you're probably not going to, and B, even if you do, you're going to learn and improve at it. But, you know, you can stack these things up where we're like, we put a whole lot of reasons in, why we're not going to go after these things or why we're not going to have a conversation with that person where we we really feel like we should. And that awareness and mortality can be like, well, you know what, let's just get, get after it. Like the fear you've got is a small one when you stack against the fact that your days are numbered. Mm. Anyway, like there's a thing about living with regret, you know, like just it's never too late to address that regret you've got, whether it's for not pursuing a dream or for something you've done in your past regret damn what a terrible what a terrible word what's the saying that goes along with that if you think the price of success is too high wait until you get the bill of regret wow that's a good one mate yeah i heard that one not long ago and uh man again i go back i go back to that to that guy that I met at Arlington and he, you know, 93 years old and shared what he shared with me about being too late and being 93 and his wife passed away. And there was things that he chose not to address and not to do because he thought it was too late in his life. And here he is at 93 years old, still going. And he's like, man, I got time right now. It was just, I waited, I waited too long. I chose not to do this because I didn't think it was possible. I didn't think it could happen. I didn't think it would turn out good. He's like, little did I know if I only would have done these little things in my life, my life would have been so much better. It's like, man, what a life lesson hearing that from a guy 60 years older than you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like we've talked about before, it's the actions that are going to make the difference. It's not just the thought and then sitting on the couch. So there is mm -hmm. going to be, discomfort and you got to be we keep saying you got to be uncomfortable you got to be comfortable being uncomfortable like you and your last couple of weeks of training to then have that satisfaction at the end of having achieved a goal is going to take something and it's you know all life is going to in, involve suffering in different times but you just you've just summed it up so well with the suffering attached to achieving a goal versus the suffering of regret I think that, that that that's a really beautiful thing. But we're sort of getting towards the, the close here. So the three points we wanted to cover here was a pursuit of meaning or fulfillment, our hobbies and recreation time, and whether it's ever too late. Were there any final thoughts you wanted to leave us with at all there, Mike, before we close? Final thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there is one, Melon. And I'm gonna I'm gonna send it. <laughs> uh, I had a good conversation with a good friend of mine. She's a little bit older. Um, she's a doctor. Um, she's like a a great aunt or something to me. And uh, she's searching for a lot of things herself and wondering if it's too late. And that was kind of the situation that she had. And um, you know, I won't get into all her business, but she 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 was seeking something for 15 years, 15 years that uh, she never addressed. And till this day, she regrets it because she knows that it would have been the massive point in her life to direct her into happiness, true happiness. Um, and that kind of started off this conversation where I was going. And basically what I'm going to say is... Uh, on this show, we have the ability to see where people listen from, from countries to states, to cities, to towns. And uh, something I've noticed recently is that there's a particular listener in a certain area, the uh, Chicago, Illinois area. And I don't really know anybody else there except particularly one person that lives there that listens to the show. And I'm pretty sure I know who it is and I'm going to speak to them for a second. And all I'm going to say is uh, it's been three years and it's, it's never too late 
to revisit what I believe needs revisited. Uh, I feel it every day still. It's been an anchor that I've dragged for three years and I want to be intentional with it and address it because <laughs> I don't know if it's going to get rid of it or if it's just going to be something really great. But what I do know is that it's one thing that I don't want to regret and I want to be intentional with it. And I just want to say to you, if you're listening, which I'm pretty sure you are, it's never too late. And, uh, yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll just leave it at that melon. Well, we're trying to practice what we preach here and, um, you guys have all just heard Mike there trying to take a step to perhaps address a regret in his life or sounds like a relationship. So it's a challenge to all of you, you know, these three areas we've talked about pursuit of meaning hobbies. It's never too late. How do you guys feel about these things? These, this whole topic came from some just fantastic feedback from listeners just like you. And we really appreciate, we appreciate the time you guys take to sit and listen to us talk. And we appreciate the feedback. Um, reviews help. If it's less than five stars, send us a message. Let us know how we can fix it before you cut us down with a terrible review. But uh, also share this out into your network. If there are people that relationships that are important to you that you feel conversations like this can help advance, share it out to those people. Copy the link and and send it on. You know that we are on on all the wherever anyone gets podcasts. So then challenge for this week is to look into those areas of your own life. What, what goals are you pursuing? What relationships do you have? Where can you take action and seize the day? And uh, how are you spending your recreation time and your hobbies? Let us know. And until next week, take care.